Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today we have number 13 doubles player on the WTA tour with 17 career doubles titles, Demi Shores. Demi, welcome. Hello. Um, so you just finished up grass court season at Wimbledon. Uh, what have you been up to since then over the past uh, week or so? What's What do you do during this kind of transition time? Uh, actually, I was I was in the Netherlands. Uh, I got injured just before Wimbledon, so um, I have some rest. Uh, try to rehab, and yeah, now next week I will build up again in my practice and then prepare for the for the U.S. swing and Montreal, of course. So, yeah, I'm just enjoying my time a little bit with family and friends, and um, yeah, using the gym and waiting to be on court again. Okay, so you're not even on the court right now you're just trying to heal yeah i'm not on court right now i'm just i'm doing my gym exercises but um okay i, I planned already a week of holidays anyways after wimbledon just mentally mm -hmm. about something else but yeah now yeah I, I was i was not doing anything just some gym yeah okay what, what did you injure uh i got injured in my back oh your I back left. okay yeah I, th I think i saw on instagram something about it um Cool. Okay. So, uh, so you've got the hard court season coming up. Um, I want to talk about that, but before we do, uh, can you just share a little bit, maybe in two to three minutes, kind of your story, like how, how you got started in tennis and, um, to what led to your pro career and, and where you are now? Yeah, I started when I was three years old. Um, so my dad, he, uh, he was a professional handball player and, um, he always makes the joke that a handball was too big to give to me. So he gave that <laughs> handball. Uh, okay. so I don't know if that's the reason why I started. But um, yeah, I was three years old um, playing some tennis with my dad. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I was a little bit older, like four, five, six years, I was going with him uh, before school and I started some lessons. Um, when I was eight years old, my, my teacher told me like, okay, I think, uh, you have a talent, but you have to go to a different, uh, tennis school, uh, with better quality. So then mm -hmm. I actually moved to Belgium. Uh, okay. the name of the tennis school is LTA. It's actually funny because usually that's in England, but now that, yeah. that's, that's the name of the tennis school. And that's where I started when I was eight years old. And right now I'm still with the same academy um of course i switched with uh, with coaches uh during the whole process but uh that's where i started when i was i was eight years old and 12 years old i started to to play um full time so i didn't go much to school uh, i started to travel a little bit more and i think that's where it all started uh, we 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 yeah went on tournaments with a with a big group of of girls in bangladesh uh, everything far away uh, mm -hmm. to get some points to get into the European tournaments and then yeah I, I, I got better and better um, did well in juniors in juniors I, I already knew that doubles is yeah more my my game style than, than singles mm -hmm. um, and then in 2015 I decided to just focus for three months on doubles because I felt like it was tough to combine the two of them um, yeah especially with the ranking um, mm -hmm. the ranking difference got bigger and bigger and in those three months when I just focused on doubles I think the second tournament uh, I played was a WTA event in Katowice um, played with Isaline Bonaventure and um, we won that title and then the, the difference was even bigger and I also realized okay I like doubles so much more than singles and <laughs> I kept going and played just doubles so yeah, I think that was one of the best uh, choices of my life. Um, so happy that I decided to play doubles and just focus on doubles. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to 2011. So that year you made, I think I read this correctly, you made the finals of all four uh, junior grand slams. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And then won the Australian Open and the US Open and all with four different partners. Um, so at that point, it seems pretty obvious you can make it in doubles, but then between 2011 and 2015, you're still playing some singles. So talk a little bit about that decision ultimately in 2015 and 
what what was going on in those years kind of um managing both singles and doubles um yeah 2011 was a unique unique year i think um mm -hmm. You said like four finals with four different partners, even at match point in Wimbledon, set point in French Open. So I was like oh, very wow. close to, to all, all, all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I still felt at that point it was too early to decide, okay, I just go for doubles. So I, I, I was still, yeah, investing in, in my singles career as well. Um, but it was very difficult. Uh, physical, um, just, yeah, to combine the two of them. So I was, I was, I kept going and kept going, but of course, in my in my mind was like, okay, I, I think I'm better in doubles than in singles. And mm -hmm. one point, um, actually, it's actually funny. I was in the, in the store with my uh, with my parents, and I wanted a new radio for my car. And um, I told them like, hey, I want to have this radio, and they told me, so you better start earning some money yourself now. So try to to earn some money, and then you can buy. It. And then, um, then we played this WTA event, and that was maybe the first time I, I earned some money, like a, a nice amount of money. And that's where it actually started. That my I didn't want to ask my parents to invest and invest and invest the whole time, and I felt mm -hmm. like it was to to try to to earn my own money. Um, so yeah, I think it was more like okay, I realized singles it's gonna be difficult to be at the top. Um, and also like physical, but also like the the, the quality of, of the game was so high. And I felt like I was not good enough. Um, and I felt like in doubles, I was playing very well and I didn't even focus yet, like full, full on doubles. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was more like, okay, I, I don't want to invest anymore. Let's try to earn some money myself and start a different career and focus just on doubles. So it was more like a process, like, still trying i didn't want to give up and at one point i had to make a decision yeah so do you think uh, i'm always curious so obviously we have this huge prize money differential between singles and doubles do you think if that was a little bit more even maybe you would have committed to doubles earlier because uh, i'm trying to like obviously i i was never anywhere close to pro but like if i could put myself in your shoes in 2011 I'm thinking, okay, I just made the finals and doubles of all four junior grand slams. Doubles makes more sense. But you look at that prize money differential and it's like, I've got to take a chance at singles because it's just such a higher payoff in the, in the long run. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I would like make the decision earlier because I still had like the main reason in my mind mm -hmm. was like, I don't want to give up. Um, Mm -hmm. keep going keep going uh till the till the last moment and then yeah if if you just focus on doubles and you win the the, the second event i think it's just a confirmation that that's the right choice yeah. um at that point my parents were still supporting me and and it was not like they told me you have to you have to choose but it was more like my own feeling and of course i talked with my parents and my team around me um Okay, what yeah. what's the best choice? But I, I I don't know. Maybe if if the 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 money was more equal, maybe I would. But I think at that point I was not like so much focused on on the money. It was more like okay, let's give it a try. Uh, because I at that point I realized okay, it's singles. My best ranking was five hundred twelve. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it was more like I realized it was not good enough to yeah to be at the yeah. top. In singles. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it, it kind of depends on the person. Um, so we talked about 2011, uh, all four grand slams with four different partners. Now you've made the WTA finals four or five years in a row with four or five different partners. Um, what is it about your game that allows you to adapt to playing with different partners? Is it, do you feel like you have a, a unique approach or a unique game style or, um, just talk a little bit about your process for that. Um, I think I'm like an easy person to play with, uh, just personality wise. Uh, I think mm. I fit with a lot of girls and I can, yeah, I, I just, I think, yeah, I have a good match with a, with a lot of girls. 
Uh, and I also think I have a unique game style, but that doesn't mean like I, I will match with, with everyone. Um, but if you see the, the tour right now, I think there are just a few game, a few players that uh, play the same game as I do. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's still uh, unique. Um, you see mo most of the girls you see, yeah, they play from the baseline. It's still, I still call it like it's more singles. Mm -hmm. uh, but my game style is more like, yeah, going to the net as much as I can. Uh, I like to be at the net. Uh, yeah, so it's, I think it's a different, different game than, than most of the girls. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that I think that that's, that's sort of the two reasons why um, I qualify with, with different girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, so now you're, um, you've played with Desiree Kraftchik for uh, um, about a year and a half now. You qualified last year. You're on pace to qualify this year. Uh, what makes Des a great partner? Uh, she's a very nice person. That's that's so important for me. I can play with, uh, let's say, with, with the best player in the world, and and if that's like if that's not a, a good person, I will not get the maximum out of myself. So first of all, mm -hmm. Des is a good person, and that helps helps me at least to to grow and to get the maximum out of it. And then I think we have a good match. Like she's very good from the baseline. She's a lefty. Um, she's serving well. Um, I think it's just a, a good match. I can be dangerous at the net, uh, but still, if I play my game and I'm coming into the net, I think Desiree is also um, yeah good enough uh, at the net and has good volleys. It's not like she's afraid of going back uh, when I'm coming in. So mm -hmm. I think it's just. Um, Person, personality wise and tennis wise, I think it's it's a good match. If if I asked Des uh, what makes Demi a good doubles partner, what do you think she would say? I think she started with my net net game. I think she will she yeah. will say, uh, I think I'm dangerous at the net, and um, if she's doing her job from the baseline, she knows I can I can be dangerous and I can take balls away and play with a lot of pressure. I think she would say you 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 have to ask her next time. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I need to get her on the podcast and, and ask her these questions. Um, what uh, so you've played? Obviously, we talked about with a lot of different partners. Uh, some right-handed. Des is left-handed. How do you adjust your game playing with a lefty? Are there certain tactical or strategical things that you do differently when you're playing with a left-handed player? Uh, yes, it, it, it is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, I think you, you have to see uh, who's playing on which uh, side. Do you have two backhands in the middle? Do you have two forehands in the middle? Mm -hmm. um, but with my game style, I think it is different when I'm coming into the net. Right now, we have two forehand volleys in the middle, so you can leave a little bit more space between each other because, um, yeah, you have two forehands, forehand volleys. Uh, mm -hmm. with a with a right-handed player that's a little bit different i would say um and i also think you can play a little bit, yeah it's just some different um place with a with a serve of course mm -hmm. it's it's different for for opponents when they get a lefty serve it's not what you usually get so i think you can use it uh, with a serve as well yeah so so when you're in the ad court and you have those forehands in the middle with a a lefty you can kind of shift to your left a little more because she's able to cover that middle a little bit better than a right-handed partner? Yeah, I would say that the difference, uh, the distance between us is a little bit bigger than when I play okay. with a, with a right-handed player. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so I want to talk about returns next because uh, as you've seen, I use your returns as an example in a lot of my videos. Mm -hmm. Um so I want to share my screen. Let me see if this will work. And I want to see if you can kind of talk us through um, your process and your kind of approach for your return in volleys. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, I saw the video. Okay. Um, okay. I think what I, what I always do is I start quite close to the baseline, but when mm -hmm. my opponent is tossing the ball and serving I really step forward so I'm like in in the court um of course then you have to see if it's going to be forehand where the ball where the ball is going um and I try to 
to take the ball as early as I can. Um, why? Uh, because then, of course, you take time away from your opponents. It's not that easy to poach for the for the net player at the other side. And I'm already far into the court, so when I'm coming to the net, um, it's not like the whole court is open. I cover already a lot of court, a lot of the court with my with my first few uh, movements. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's something that yeah, it's yeah, I see it now as well. Um, I just take the ball so early. I think mo some players are not used to it um, because yeah. my my problem is not really hard. No, it's more like I take it early and and then at the end, I, of course, I try to place it well. Like this return is it's perfect deep in the in the court. Um, so I would mm -hmm. say that's my my strength with with the with the return to take it early and. And go in and for an opponent, uh, opponent, I think it's uh, a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, one of the things I notice with uh, your returns more, I think more than most people, is how much forward momentum you get. So you you said you start kind of behind the baseline and then you take a big step forward. I think you take more space to do that than most players, maybe than anybody I've seen on the tour. Is that something you've always done or is it something you've developed and you just found it works for you? Um, my intensity was always to go in. So mm -hmm. I think that's something I, I always did in the past, but um, yeah, I think I de developed a little bit more in, in taking more time away and taking more um, space to step in yeah so if i compare to other players i think there is maybe one like garcia she's really into the, in the into the court but she starts already into the court she's like in 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 the court and then she makes a little step and i yeah. think at the end almost at the same place to hit the ball the only difference is that i'm i start more backward back um but i step really like one two meters into the court except she's staying there already but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's something that that it's work that's it's working for me for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's probably just kind of a personal preference thing, and people have to decide what what works best for them. Um, yeah, and it's funny because I played a, a few times with Kiki Burton's, and she's the opposite. She's mm -hmm. like far from the, and it wasn't clay, far from the from the baseline, and she likes to stay back, and and it was so funny. Like if you see the difference where. And that was in practice. We were just warming up uh, the, the return. The difference between where she was staying and where I was hitting the ball <laughs> return. It's, it's it's so big, the difference. And then we, yeah. we were trying to do the opposite. So she was trying to do my style. I was trying to do her style. Yeah, that was <laughs> not working. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Did you, uh, did you have trouble with those returns when you were stepping way back? I have to, I have to get used to it, I think. I... Yeah. I sometimes actually on clay when my maybe my return is a little bit off or someone is playing a very good kick serves um, um i act like i go in because everyone thinks i'm going in but then i go back so i give myself a lot of time and i play a little bit higher back but yeah. my instinct is always to go in and take time away and play with pressure sure yeah so for so for people listening who want to implement the return in volley it sounds like step forward take it early uh don't focus on hitting the ball too hard right just you, you've used your court position to take away time from the opponent so you don't need to hit it hard uh and then hit it depth and use that momentum to to get forward to the net um john from instagram so we posted on instagram uh, to see if anybody had questions for you uh, john asked what is your approach or tactics returning against eye formation so how do you approach that i think it's something personal i know some girls they really know already in advance okay i'm gonna go line or i'm gonna return cross mm -hmm. i don't like to, sometimes i do but usually i just uh play with my feelings and intuition so when i when they serve to me i just choose like in a split of a second where i want to return um mm -hmm. So that's something personal, I would say. Um, maybe most of the girls, they know already in advance, okay, I'm going to go line and cross, and then the point starts. Um, but you can, of course, 
take some things with you in your mind. Um, depends a little bit who you play. Usually with the girls, backhand volleys are less good, uh, less powerful. So if you don't know where to go, it's always good to search for the backhand volley. Uh, sometimes it's even good to chip the, the return because the net player is choosing a side. So yeah, you have different options. But to start with, I would say like first make a decision if you want to know already before the return, I want to go cross or line. Or mm -hmm. if you just want to play with your feeling and, and decide at last minute. But yeah, you have to go with commitment, of course. Otherwise, the net player would take the ball away. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, for, for me, a lot of the times, I think I'm more like you where I, I like to wait until I see the serve to decide. But sometimes I will, I return from the ad court as well a lot, but sometimes I will decide before the point if I get a forehand, I'm going line. If I get a backhand, I'm going cross. And yeah. that way, it's just a little bit easier return for me because I'm going across my body. Uh, and I prefer my backhand return cross. But you also mentioned the chip. Did you mean like a chip lob in that scenario? Yeah, you can always go up. I don't, mm -hmm. do, I don't do that often, but um, it is, it, it's a good play. I Especially with, with girls, I think if... Uh, if they play eye formation and you can chip lob cross, usually you're on the back end of the of the opponent. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's also it depends a little bit who you're playing. Some girls, you know, okay, the baseline player, the the back end is better, so they probably take the cross away and she uh, the line away, and she wants to have that back end. So it depends a little bit who you play, and I think that's something just tactic wise, you make make a decision where you go, sure. and and. And ver like strong middle ball that works sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Choosing a side. Um. Okay, so let's move on to net play. So, uh, Jack from Twitter asked, "How are you so good at volleys? Do you have any practice drill recommendations? And how do you make such quick decisions?" Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, when I, when I was young, I, I did a lot of volley volley with my dad. Uh, mm -hmm. We called it the Woodies at that time. Uh, just like volley, 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 volley the whole time. I was, I was, I couldn't even go, my, my eyes were under the, the net. I was that small, but I wanted to play volleys all day long. So <laughs> I, that's something where it started already. Um, I played soccer and I was goalkeeper. So I also think uh, that's something that helped me a little bit with the reactions and, and, yeah, taking balls away on court. Um, and right now I do some I do some practices for my eyes, uh, just reaction uh, practice with, with little lights or um, with, with balls on a 3D um, screen uh, to mm -hmm. practice the focus of the eyes. And I think those those are just little things to, to practice. Um, and that's something that, yeah, I think I get better as a person, just reaction-wise, focus-wise. But also, I think it's something like one of the talents that I have uh, in my net in my net game. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not a baseline player, but I I just like to be at the net, and I think um, yeah, that's something that I will always do. And you will never see me staying back the whole match and and hitting balls from the baseline. I just like to be at the net, and I think it's just something that I yeah that I like, and I I can I can do well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more fun to watch too. <laughs> um, what did you say that you, you called the the volleys back and forth with your dad? The Woodies, the um, from from the the two players at that time. Woodbridge. Oh, or... oh, oh, the Woodies. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> got it. Um, I don't know why they we called it that. I think it was something <laughs> that we heard, and then we we just did it as well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they did that. Uh, so another thing that I've noticed watching you play is sometimes you will, especially on the do side, you'll serve from way out in the doubles alley. So talk about that a little bit, why you do it, how you decide when to do it. Uh, yes, I started doing that when I was working with Thorsten Peschke. He, he's, mm -hmm. yeah, I think he's very good uh, in... Uh, positioning on court um, and he came up with that idea um, 
I think it helps when maybe you're struggling with your serve. Uh, first of all, you give a, a different view to your opponents and they're maybe like, oh, what's going to happen? And on the juice side, it's just easier to make the angle um, wide. Mm -hmm. And some people, they start to cover the wide ball, but then you can jam them actually into the body backhand. Um, so I think it's just like also a mental game. Uh, it makes it easier for me to play some plays like the wide serve and the, and the backhand body. But from the other side, it's also a different view. And yeah, you're gonna be in your in the sometimes in the head of the of the opponent, and yeah, they can start thinking, especially if they return well and and you have some troubles with your your serve. I think it's something good to to mix up. Yeah, yeah, it's good to give the opponent a different look for sure um let's see so how do you approach uh mixed doubles differently if at all um i think for sure it's different because uh, the guys are playing so well um usually the the guy is the leader in the team um so far i didn't do that well in mixed doubles um i think my best result was maybe quarters or semis once um yeah, I think you made the semis in one of them. I was looking yesterday. Yeah, one of the then grand slams. Yeah. Yeah, then we played Karatsev and Vesnina. With uh, I played with Wesley Kohov. Um, yeah, it is different. I feel like uh, the guy is taking a lot of responsibility, and sometimes I think too much. They they don't trust uh, us yeah. <laughs> enough. But um, yeah, it it is different. Uh, you try to avoid the the guy. Um, and sometimes, because you know the guy, the opponent take the, the, the responsibility, you think that they're moving the whole time, so you're going to play more line. Uh, it is different, yeah. You, you you try to play more to the girl, but sometimes, it yeah, it's also a mental game because you don't know what the guy's doing. Some of them are very active. Some of them, they just take away a lot of, of space on the court, but they're not, like, really active. Mm -hmm. So it is. I think it is different um describe your ideal doubles partner um i think i was playing very well with ashley body i know she is a good player in general but yeah uh, yeah she had something special um i i didn't need to worry about anything else just about my game um she just had a very easy going attitude i i like that as well um and just her game style, she had a good serve. So I think that's something that is important for me, someone with a good serve. And mm -hmm. um, I think I need, or someone who's very good from the baseline so I can do my my job at the net, like Desiree, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I can also match with someone who plays almost the same game style as I do. If someone is serving well, but still coming in, uh, very active at the net, I think then you get like a real, real doubles game. I think mm -hmm. that can work too. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that you, you typically don't see both players doing. So I feel like it would be kind of a strategic advantage since most teams don't see uh, both opponents getting to the net a lot. Um, yeah. At, le I at least currently. I call it done, then, I call it a little bit more like man's doubles. And I like, mm -hmm. of course, I play with less power and it, it is still different, but I think. The, the style that I'm playing is more like men's than, than women's doubles. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have any, uh, <laughs> any doubles partners? This could be women's or uh, mixed doubles. Any partners that you have never played with that you'd want to play with, like a dream doubles partner? Oof, um, I think it would be nice to play mixed doubles with Nadal. Just... Yeah. Uh, because I like him and I, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, a woman's doubles, then I would say maybe in the past Serena, I think that because mm -hmm. it's a, a legend. Yeah. I played her once in Fed Cup, but to play with her, I think that's something different. And um, yeah, I think I would say those two names. Yeah. You should ask an adult to play uh, in the French Open next year. <laughs> I think he will save his energy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Hopefully he's healthy for it. 
Um, so a couple, <clears throat> a couple more uh, listener questions, and then a few rapid fire questions, and then we'll let you go here. Uh, let's see. Hamlin asks, uh, which opponents do you feel like you and Des match up best against and worst against? Um, if if I I would say like for example, um, Pegula Golf, they're very good, one of the mm-hmm. best teams. But I still think that we always play well against them, and we always uh, play a good match. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know, like it's all for us, and I think for everyone, it's just very difficult always to play against the Czech girls, Prechikova, Sinyakova. Yeah, I don't. Know if it's just a word, a bad match. I think just they're just very good. Um, yeah, I think they, are, yeah, they're a little bit better than all the rest if they play full. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I think I would say Pegula Golf for sure. We always play a good match. It's always a, a high quality match from both sides, and we we won already and we lost already. But I think that's always a a good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching uh in the WTA finals last year. That was a yeah, really struggling a little bit there, but um. And, yeah. And we play them now in semis in Rome. Uh. Very close match, but quality is always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pushkar asked, how easy or difficult is it to play against a former partner? Um, I think it depends a little bit how you, yeah, let's say, end the relationship. Um, I have to say I'm always good with my, with my ex-partners, and that's something that I also want to because i don't like to have tension in general because i see those people almost every week Uh, i know for some girls it's not easy to play against uh, an ex doubles partner but um i think when i was younger it was not that easy i always got very nervous but right now i feel like it's just a match and everyone is trying to do their best and we have respect for each other and i think that's it uh, Jay asked, what happens after tennis? Um, does doubles pay enough to not work post-pro career? What's next for you? Um, if I still have to work, I don't know. It depends a little bit of my career, I think, um, and how yeah. long I'm going to play. My mindset is to play at least till 35 years, but we will see. Maybe it's going to be... 34 maybe it's going to be 38 i have no idea i I just like the game and i have a lot of passion for for the game Mm -hmm. Um, after tennis i still want to be uh, a coach but i think i don't going to travel that much anymore i just i'm a person who likes to be at home uh, likes to be with family and that's important for me as well Um, and maybe i want to be a fed cup captain or assistant captain um maybe analyzing some doubles for TV. I think that's mm-hmm. something that, um, that I'm going to do. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd be really good at that. Um, so last listener question. This is not doubles related. Matt asked, what is your favorite kind of potato dish? <laughs> Baked, boiled, mashed, or French fries? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think he thought I wouldn't ask this, but I wanted to anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I like mashed potatoes, but I also like French fries sometimes or sweet potato. I think that's something good mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So I like almost all the food. I just like to eat. and <laughs> Yeah. So, but if I have to choose, yeah, I would say like when I'm, when I eat sometimes French fries because it's still kind of special to eat it. I think that's my choice then. Yeah, good choice. Uh, okay, so the last few questions here from me. Uh, what is your favorite tennis book? I don't read, actually. I don't like to read. Yeah, but, uh, okay. I I, I had the book of Nadal, Agassi. Uh-huh. So, yeah, more like those kind of things than... Uh... <clears throat> like biographies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah um what is it what's your favorite surface grass yeah grass I like, I like i like it when it goes fast 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I have to say, in the, in, the, in the last few years, I was always joking with my coach about Clay, like, oh, no, Clay season is starting. But mm -hmm. I think result-wise, uh, maybe my best results are on Clay now. I don't know. I'm like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I play well on every surface, I can say. But if I can choose, I choose grass. Yeah. Yeah, you won Stuttgart twice in a row now. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite tournament? Um, I like Wimbledon for sure because it's just something unique. But I mm -hmm. like to be in Australia. Um, okay. I just like the the atmosphere. I like the people. They are always very friendly. When I wake up, it's good weather. I just like to be there. I think it's uh it's very nice, and uh, I think Rome is very nice as well. Okay. So that was my next question. What are your favorite cities uh, to travel to? I guess Melbourne and, and Rome. Um, of course, I related a little bit to tournaments. Uh, it always, yeah. Uh, yeah, it depends a little bit how you feel in a tournament, how you feel in the city, I would say. But uh, yeah, I like Rome. I like Melbourne. Melbourne. I do like New York. It's it's kind of busy, but uh, after tennis in the evenings to walk around, I think it's nice for those two weeks. Um, yeah, I would I would go with, with those cities. Yeah. What's a favorite meal you've had at a tournament? Uh, um, yeah. You know, in Rome, um, there is like a, a very good Italian restaurant. Uh, and and a lot of players are going there, so yeah. I would say if I if I think about food and tournaments right now, um, I would I would go with with Rome with the with the food because on the tournament is already good, but in that restaurant Tavana Trilusa it calls it's uh it's so good it's uh yeah it's unique to have that food. What what did you order this year? Oh, I I think I had a whole menu. <laughs> <laughs> I was with my coach and my mom, and uh, we went there like four times in the whole week, uh, and with Desiree as well, and uh, we chose different pastas, and we were sharing. So I think I tried almost everything now, and they're all so good. Uh, I th I think I've seen some pictures on Instagram of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um. Okay. So last question for you today. Uh, how do we make doubles more popular? Yeah, good question. I think something we have to figure out because um, I think a lot of people actually want doubles to be more uh, popular, but I think we didn't find a way yet to get it more popular. Um, and it's funny because when you when you go to to England, if you if you play Eastbourne or you play Wimbledon, people are so happy when they see doubles. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we just have to figure out how we get how we get doubles more popular because I think it's a it's just like a, a specific uh, sport I would om almost say sometimes I say like doubles is different sport than singles because um, mm -hmm. yeah you see you see just different things uh, for people on the court I think it's more fun uh, more things are happening um, yeah if if someone can tell me how to get doubles more popular <laughs> I will I will help. <laughs> We're working on it. Demi, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. I'm sure we'll do it again at some point, hopefully live, maybe in New York uh, later this year. Yeah, that would be nice to have a chat with you and Desiree, and uh, I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, let's set it up. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, I'll link to everything in the show notes, and I will talk to you all next week. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Double Strategy newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.